Well, undoubtedly, this is the Nationwide Conference's game of the day. Second place Dover against fourth place Diamonds. Both sides looking to get nearer to Kidderminster at the top. The Diamonds have got one hell of a task this afternoon because Dover are the conference's form side. They've won five and drawn one of their last six conference games and indeed have won their last six at home. They haven't lost a conference match here at the Crabble since September the 11th. Well, we just saw a shot of Darren Collins there. He's been dropped this afternoon by Brian Talbot. How often do we say that? But he's one of three changes to the Diamond side that beat Billericay in the FA Trophy replay in the week. Collins this afternoon replaced by Miquel de Souza up front who impressed when he came on as a substitute in that midweek game. John Brady also left out surprisingly today. He's replaced by John Hampshire and there's a less surprising addition in the midfield with Mackle Hatton coming back in for Gary Mills. The Dover side though have been the conference's surprise package this season. Dover manager Bill Williams makes two changes from the side that beat Doncaster last week in the trophy. Ex-Stevenage players Jimmy Strouts and Dave Morrison come in for Jonathan Virgo and top scorer Joff Fancitart who's missing today through injury. That's a boost for the Diamonds. Well David Lowe there, he's made an immediate impact in then part two goals in his first three games. He keeps his place up front alongside Miquel D'Souza, I was mentioning D'Souza replaces Collins up front this afternoon for the Diamonds. Michael Hatton has recovered sufficiently from slight uh, thigh strain to be included this afternoon. That's a big boost for the Diamonds, that is. He had a late fitness test here at the Crabble this morning. Well, John Hampshire hasn't had too many opportunities in the Diamonds first team this season, but he gets one today. And Ruthen and Diamonds are aiming to become the first side since Doncaster in early September to win a conference game here at the Crabble. The home side winning an early corner though which is taken by Monday and there was a shove in there I think by Jimmy Strouts who indeed latched onto that ball whipped in from the left flank so no questions about the caliber of the Diamonds opposition today that's a far post ball which is looking for Jimmy Strouts Kenny Crumman this time has to head behind Dover with their third corner inside the opening seven minutes here at the Crabble. Nil-nil though. Clark takes it once again. Far post again and that looked for Strouts. Who won it well in the air, Jimmy Strouts. Couldn't test Turley with the header. That's well charged down by John Hampshire. Lee Shearer, the player on the ground. John Hampshire out wide looking for D'Souza in the middle. It was over his head and that's a good claim there by Paul Hyde. Bill D'Souza who scored in the Diamonds midweek victory over Billericay. Warmel. That was Clark. Now Brown. Tries to make the byline and does well, Steve Brown. No one there to collect his cross though at the far post. Hampshire pushes it out for the Diamonds. That's low. Hampshire again. D'Souza on the chase and he's got the better here of Simon Beard. D'Souza in the box, a fine challenge from Lee Shearer. John Hampshire with the Diamonds first corner of the match. Right footed, Ray Warburton a long way out but he got his header in on target and on another day those take deflections and roll past the keeper. Hampshire with a delivery aimed towards the edge of the box. Warburton there, no pace behind the header. Oh, Underwood does well there to nip the ball off Tony Brown. D'Souza. D'Souza showing some good early touches. David Lowe. Underwood. D'Souza makes his way into the box and will look for that. That was Shearer's clearance. Headed out by Brown. Underwood. Tussling with Simon Warmel. Butterworth and Clark there. Crammond's ball hit Clark. This is Shearer. Well, that was a hopeful ball up the line there by Beard, looking for Steve Brown and Turley's clearance hit Brown. And it's gone out for a Diamonds goal kick. Underwood. And he forced Tony Brown into conceding the corner there. The Diamonds have come more into this game. It was all Dover in the opening stages. That's John Hampshire towards the far post. Rodwell beaten. Tim Wooding! 
Very close indeed there from Tim Wooding. 20 minutes gone. He came all the way to this far side. Tony Brown beaten once again by Underwood. And he's been allowed to run, what, 40, 50 yards unchallenged there. The ball in towards David Lowe. That's easy though for Dover. They've got two big men in the centre of the defence. Diamonds will have to be a little more creative if they want to get past them. Now low inside the box, Wooding. Tim Wooding, well forward to strike the second of two efforts inside two minutes. Good play by Lowe. Butterworth. Wooding. Diamonds building patiently. That was Hampshire. Butterworth looks for Underwood ball intercepted though by Beard and Turley with a dodgy clearance and there's got to be a flag up there well it came late there Steve Brown it was the player who was a mile offside but uh, Billy Turley with a slightly shaky clearance that's D'Souza now David Lowe Souza look for Michael Hatton but the interception came there from Stuart Monday now Wooding Michael Hatton David Lowe opportunity for the cross and it's a good one and Underwood didn't jump there when a leap might have meant that the Diamonds would have been going a goal up the ball drifted over Paul Hyde Warmall oh that's a nice play there and a chance here for Steve Brown who's through Diamonds are trying to get back at him Brown can only shoot straight there at Billy Turley. That was a lapse though in the visitors' defence. Now Shearer with his free kick. Brown's touch on, headed out by Kenny Crumman. Going to come back to Warmer. Both sides badly in need of a victory today, make no mistake about that. If they're to apply further pressure on Kidderminster, who are at home today to Hensford. Now that's a game you'd expect Kidderminster to win. Butterworth well up there on Clark. McElhatton. Wooding. More patient build up play from the Diamonds. Now to Souza. Butterworth back to Tim Wooding. Kenny Crumman can't keep that ball in play. Nice play. That's low to Underwood. Chances here for the Diamonds. McElhatton's on the far post. Here he is. That was a good chance. Michael McElhatton there, who's scored 12 goals this season for the Diamonds. You'd expect him to put that sort of chance away. Lovely play between Lowe and Underwood. Underwood picked out his man superbly. And McElhatton there, unmarked, unchallenged. Header was too high. Ball Underwood. Ray Warburton. Butterworth. Michael Hatton. Warburton. And that was a pretty hopeful ball, although a poor clearance from Norman, picked up by John Hampshire. Another good ball in. Hampshire. Woodings cross. D'Souza looks for it. And he got there first ahead of Lee Shearer. It was one of those chances where he was actually moving away from goal to try and meet a cross. Whipped in with pace with a defender goal side. And he just couldn't get the direction on it. Diamonds, though, are in control of things at the minute. Still, it's goalless, though. Wooding does well. D'Souza. Lightning turn of pace by D'Souza. He's up to this this afternoon, you can tell. Underwood in loads of space and plenty of players are making their way forward. D'Souza! Oh, that's a superb goal. That's what clinical finishing is all about. The Diamonds broke from the back with Tim Wooding there. He slipped the ball to D'Souza. Out to Underwood. The cross spun in to perfection by Underwood and D'Souza was there to meet it. That's a quality goal and the Diamonds have broken the deadlock in this hugely important conference game right on the stroke of half time that is such an important goal for them
that's what they can do when they're really up for it the diamonds and a hugely important time to score we're into first half stoppage time indeed the referee is checking his watch and Turley has been allowed to clear that at field well that is the half time whistle and the diamonds are ahead at the Crabble thanks to McQuill the Sousa's goal just before half time a tremendously important time to score a fine goal it was too by De Souza, his seventh of the season this has been an entertaining game so far between second and fourth in the conference we've had openings at both ends but at the halfway stage the diamonds lead by a goal to nil welcome back to the south coast where it's almost like a party atmosphere inside the Crabble the fans inside know it's a hugely important match the Diamonds are leading in at the moment thanks to that very late goal in the first half from D'Souza. This was a game in which Dover started the brighter, certainly, but failed to capitalise on one or two early chances. The Diamonds then gradually got more into it and fashioned a uh, truly excellent goal just on the stroke of half time. This is Steve Norman. Simon Warmel on the far side and that's well taken down there by Warmel trying to work himself a shooting opportunity which he does and he's so unfortunate really good play there by Simon Warmel who took that cross field pass on his chest majestically cut inside and then left footed this effort had beaten Turley bent around the goalkeeper off the inside of a post and Warburton just denies Brown well, that's lifted the home side right at the start of this second half. Shearer heading at Billy Turley. Dover have come out of the blocks at some pace in this second half. That's Crammond going through late there on Warmall, who's taken a bit of a battering thus far. It's going to be a yellow card for Kenny Crammond, much to the delight of the home supports. Certainly, no doubt that was late by Crammond taken by Beard easy for Rodwell low upfield that's John Hampshire that was low and Monday misjudged that John Hampshire well it was worth a try an effort that skimmed along the ground didn't test Paul Hyde at all up to Brown that was the substitute Carruthers doing well normal out wide ball into Brown in space Dover come very close yet again to drawing level that was just inches wide from Steve Brown and maybe he should have done better tremendous cross by Warmel and well he was stretching for that to be fair to Brown but inches wide of the post it's twice inside the opening 10 minutes of the second half that Dover have seriously had the diamonds panicking inside the box and the home side have got real momentum behind them now. This is Morrison. Across towards Brown. Rodwell came across. Throw in. Clark. Well played by Clark. Warmel. And that was late by Butterworth. Warmel, who was victim of a late challenge by Crammon earlier. And Butterworth, no doubt that. That was a little bit uh, reckless from Gary Butterworth. Warmall is okay. Butterworth yellow carded. Looks like it's going to be Beard. And he got it up and down, but not quickly enough. They're going to have to do something fairly sharpish to maintain this run of six straight victories. Souza in plenty of space, real chance for the Diamonds here and he's round the goalkeeper, McElhatton in support and that's hit Shearer's hands, definite penalty well it all depends now on whether the referee sees it fit to show Shearer a red card it certainly is sending off offence great ball from Hampshire through to D'Souza he skipped past the keeper but was driven wide McElhatton back into the danger area well indeed Shearer's only been shown a yellow card there were players back there I would say that's sensible refereeing but what a chance for the Diamonds and John Hampshire now 2-0 Dover's proud impressive home record looks like being wiped out this afternoon as the Diamonds go two up 
63 minutes gone. John Hampshire there with his second penalty of the season. He scored in the FA Cup match against Scunthorpe back in October. The Diamonds now are well on the road to what could be a hugely important victory. Lovely penalty by Hampshire sending the goalkeeper the wrong way. And Bill Williams makes a change. The player being replaced is Morrison. Neil Lebihan is coming on. Well, you only have to cast your mind back about three weeks to the Diamonds match down at Forest Green. Forest Green second from bottom. Diamonds second from top at that stage were beaten by Forest Green. And now they come to the second place side in the conference and are turning it on like this. They've soaked up everything Dover threw at them in the first half and have hit the home side with two killer blows. On the far side now is Warmer. Plenty of players up there, they all missed it. Well, that was a fine chance there. The home side to pull one back. It's gone out of play and the Diamonds have a throw after all that. Warmer whizzes this across and the Behan just misses it. Strouts just misses it. Clark just misses it. That's agonising for Dover. Still they trail 2-0. This is low. Wooding. Souza. And it's three on two here. The Diamonds moving forward once again with pace. Paul Underwood. Souza rushes into the middle. Lowe's in there as well. Souza meets it. That's three. This is turning into a quality display of attacking football now by the Diamonds. Another clinical attack which D'Souza started, almost a carbon copy of his first goal this afternoon. D'Souza started it, spread it to Underwood, waited for the cross. You can see here D'Souza moved forward, out to Paul Underwood, made his way into the centre. Another expert delivery by Underwood. D'Souza unmarked yet again, but the run was late. And a straightforward header past the goalkeeper. 3-0, the Diamonds almost certainly heading for victory now. It would be one of their most impressive performances this season, I should think. Certainly judging by the hype there was before this game. That's a 20-yard effort from Brown, which goes straight to Billy Turley there. But Dover Athletic, for all the talk of their impressive home record, the Diamonds have turned it on, certainly in the second half heading for what would be a pretty comfortable victory with under 20 minutes left those two goals in uh, the space of eight minutes midway through this second half from Hampshire and D'Souza have settled it this is D'Souza who's on a hat-trick now he's got eight goals this season with Paul D'Souza seven of them have been away from Nen Park now low inside the box and the corner conceded there by Simon Beard Hampshire trots over to take it. 17 minutes to go. Jim Rodwell. The Diamonds go four up. Dover's defence is in absolute tatters. And we're now into the realms of a training game for this afternoon's visitors, who certainly now are going to be swapping places with their hosts. The simplicity of this goal once again beggars belief. Hampshire's corner. And Jim Rodwell there, well, so easy for him. He wasn't even challenged. Two yards out. And well, I could have scored that. 4-0 to the Diamonds. Dover heading for their first home defeat since September. Not only that, but their run of five wins and a draw in the last six games is coming to a shuddering halt now. Now Kenny Crammond and the Diamonds can enjoy themselves in these last 15 minutes or so. Certainly no one expected this kind of scoreline. But the changes have paid off for Brian Talbot. No John Brady today, no Gary Mills who played in the week, no Darren Collins. Dover, I should think, will go back to the drawing board after today their title credentials seriously being questioned there could be a fifth here with Michael McElhatton why didn't he square it that would have been five well McElhatton there obviously wanted his 13th goal of the season and he's having a word with D'Souza saying I know I should have squared it 
but it doesn't really matter because the Diamonds have already well won this match. Lovely turn by McElhan, just a shame that he couldn't supply the finish. Lowe and D'Souza would have been on hand to score that fifth goal. McElhatton makes way now though, that's his last contribution. Gary Mills coming on with seven minutes to go. This is D'Souza. Beard. Cutting the side here is Carruthers. Well, that shot just about sums up Dover's afternoon. I would think it's strange, really, because they started the better of these two, but failed to capitalise on some good early chances. And since then, the Diamonds have simply run rampant. The home side do have a corner, though. Warmel takes it. This is Strauss. Time in which to pick a player out in the box. Looks for the far post where Lebeham was sliding in. Wooding. And that was late there by Paul Underwood on Simon Warmel. And the Dover number eight has been kicked to shreds this afternoon by Diamonds players. Crum and Ampeterworth have had a go at him. Now Underwood's chipped in. Yellow card for Underwood, the Diamonds' fourth of the afternoon. They've got to stop picking up these sloppy bookings, but Warmel looks in a bad way. And not for the first time recently, we're seeing the appearance of a stretcher in a game involving the Diamonds. Hopefully Warmel's OK. Free kick to Dover, though, in these dying moments, taken by Simon Beard. with a cushion header back to Billy Turley. And Turley uses up the last couple of seconds of this match. In no rush to get on with things. The final whistle, I reckon, is coming just about any moment. And there it is. It's been a Diamonds performance of equality. I don't think it's been better this season. Dover's home record, proud home record that stretches back to September is reduced to dust thanks largely to two goals from Miquel de Souza. Jim Rodwell and John Hampshire also on the score sheet for the Diamonds this afternoon as they give a sharp reminder to the rest of the conference exactly what they're capable of. Dover and the Diamonds swap places at the top of the conference. Rushden now second behind Kidderminster thanks to a really awesome display of attacking footy that simply carved through Dover here on the south coast. Great all-round team performance from goalkeeper to centre forwards. The defence was rock solid, forwards ruthless. It's finished here at the Crabble, a very surprising Dover nil, Diamonds four. Well, Terry Wesley, that was impressive stuff. You must be well delighted. We're delighted to win, but you're also delighted in the manner of which we played and the manner of which we've won. Um, big games come with big players, and, and today people say we've got big name players, but well, we've produced a big performance. Uh, top of the table clash. We needed three points, they need three points, so it's good to collect three points today. And uh, all I can say, the crossing today, the way the lads played was superb. I mean, the two goals we got were. OK, that was good headers, but the ball was just put straight on my head. I couldn't really miss from where the ball was put in. You know, the lads were superb today. Well, Terry, it'd be hard to pick out any individual performance. It's a great team performance. Is that probably the best away performance of the season? Yes, and even possibly one of the better performances of the season, at home or away. Because um, you're right in what you say, that from, from Billy Turley through to David Lowe up front, um, the team selection the manager has made has been first class, um, and every single player has contributed to a, to a top-class performance, nine and a half out of ten. The pitch early on looked as if it was going to dig up really, really badly. It did in some parts, but it still didn't deter you from playing the ball on the floor. There's some wonderful we were, football. We were delighted with the pitch because it was short grass, it was flat early on, and you could zing the ball around. You know, it had a bit of wet top on it. The wind died a little bit. I come down early this morning and give Mac a hat and a fitness test, um, and it was blowing a gun, and we thought, blimey, this is going to be difficult. But by the time we got here at 3 o'clock, it eased down a little bit, and the sun was out, and that brought the best out of us. You know, we could move the ball around, and we have played at other places where it's been difficult.
difficult to get the ball down and you get criticised. But today, the pitch helped us. We really moved the ball about, but the movement and, and the forward play, particularly from my point of view, I thought was first class. Tuesday's game becomes a really big game, like you've just said. You must be delighted with getting a game right from the start today. You hoping that will continue for Tuesday? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, Darren got sent off uh, uh, first half Tuesday night and um, he's suspended for three games. Um, the gaffer's looking for a strike and a partnership up front and with Daz being suspended for three games, I think it makes sense just to give me a little run on the side and see how me and Lozy can gel together during the time now and then when Darren's suspended and we'll go from there. Any injury worries for the next seven days at all, Terry? We've got one or two, to, to be honest with you. Um, Ray Bor Warburton's just hobbled past us. Um, Mackle Hatton, obviously, with his thigh strain, he's done magnificently well to play for us, just to get himself on the pitch. But again, he's such a big player. You know, you could feel it in their dressing room when they saw his name on the sheet. They know he's playing. And it was a massive plus for us that he was back with us so obviously he's going to be sore and Gary Butterworth is, is a little bit sore in his groin um, so we've had a real good warm down today um, and we're going to report again on Monday and obviously turn our attentions to Tuesday's game.